So the problem of evil consists of two beliefs. Um, One belief is the belief that God possesses certain attributes like power, intelligence and goodness. And the second belief is that the world contains certain properties like pain, suffering, death and evil. If these beliefs cannot be reconciled, either the belief that God possesses certain attributes or the belief that the world contains certain properties like evil must be abandoned. So moral evil is the physical pain and mental suffering brought about by the deliberate actions or neglect of human beings. On the other hand, natural evil is pain and suffering that's not brought about by any human beings. This can include biological causes such as disease and physical causes such as earthquakes or volcano eruptions. The logical problem of evil is a deductive, meaning the truth of the conclusion is guaranteed by the truth of the premises, and an a priori, meaning knowledge gained prior to experience, argument which is based on the incompatibility of the existence of evil and the attributes of God. Mackey shows this with his inconsistent triad, which explains that believers hold God's omnipotence, God's omnibenevolence and the existence of evil to all be true. However, this is incoherent, as if God were omnipotent, he would eliminate evil completely, and if he were supremely good, he would want to eliminate evil. However, evil exists, which shows that an omnipotent and omnibenevolent God cannot exist. Therefore, Mackey argues that believers must either give up their belief in God or admit that they have an irrational and inconsistent belief in God. An issue with the logical problem of evil is Plantinga's free will defence. Plantinga says that God had created a perfect world, giving some creatures free will, like Satan and humans, but the agents used their free will to do evil. This evil is the consequence of a greater good, which is free will. He argues that God cannot create a world where humans have genuine free will, but where we are always caused to do what is right. Humans are only significantly free if they are capable of doing both moral good and moral evil. God could only remove evil by removing the greater good of human freedom. Therefore, the existence of an omnipotent, omniscient and supremely good God is compatible with the existence of evil. Plantinga also argues that this applies to natural evil, as natural evil is simply the result of Satan or demons. This makes natural evil a form of moral evil, and therefore its existence is also explained by the free will of non-humans such as Satan. The evidential problem of evil is an inductive, meaning the truth of the conclusion is not guaranteed by the truth of the premises, and a posteriori, knowledge gained after experience, argument which is based on observations of the intensity of suffering in the world. William Rowe puts this forward as he argues that the sheer amount of evil in the world counts against the existence of an omnipotent, omnibenevolent and omniscient God. This is because much of this evil does not lead to a greater good and seems pointless and preventable, and therefore it is reasonable to accept that God does not exist. One issue with the evidential problem of evil is John Hick's soul-making theodicy. Hick asks why God created humans as imperfect, but he presumes there must be a reason for this as God is supremely good. Hick explains that pain and suffering enables our moral and spiritual development, as responding to evils allows us to make decisions which develop our virtues. For example, forgiveness is a response to the evil of dishonesty. He says that acquiring these virtues through hard work allows them to be genuine and makes them more valuable. Hick argues that God allows animals to suffer because he wanted to create a world in which his existence could be doubted. If God just proved he existed, we wouldn't be free to develop a relationship with him. And a relationship which is acquired through choice is more valuable to God than a relationship which has been forced. Hick also argues that God allows such terrible evils because terrible evils are only terrible in contrast to ordinary evils. Therefore, if God did get rid of terrible evils, then the worst ordinary evils would become the new terrible evils. Furthermore, if God got rid of terrible evils, then he would keep reducing free will and the development of personal and spiritual virtues.